Hi guys! Welcome to the first class of principle of macroeconomics. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh. So, I am Alessandro Peri and I'm gonna be your instructor for this course. Now, this is the first step towards understanding modern macroeconomics. So, we are gonna embark in a long journey that is gonna take this, the entire semester, where we are trying to understand the basics of modern macroeconomics. So, let's start our journey. So, let me tell you a little bit about the organization of this course. Now, this course is organized in 15 chapters. Now, can you see the stairs there? Now, if I count correctly, there are literally 15 steps. So, let's take one after the other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Now, these are going to be the chapters that we are going to cover, and in which we will cover all the materials that is going to be useful in order to understand how macroeconomists nowadays think about what happens in the real world. Now, the first four chapters of this course are going to cover material that you have already seen in your Principle of Micro class. After that, we are going to move to the chapters that really belong to Principle of Macroeconomics. Let us start by giving a definition about what is macroeconomics. Now, macroeconomics study the behavior of our economy as a whole. In particular, macroeconomists are interested in question is why there are countries that grow more than others and what explains these different growth paths across countries. Other questions are why countries experience higher inflation than others. And most recently is what is the effect of a pandemic of a pandemic on the macroeconomy. So these are all the type of questions that we need an answer for and for which we need a way of thinking about it. In chapter one, we are gonna review the 10 principles of economics. In particular, we are trying to understand how people make decisions, how people interact within each other, and how the economy works as a whole. Then we move to chapter two. Chapter two is a very interesting chapter because it's the first chapter where we learn how economists think. In particular, economists are in the job of understanding the real world, right? What is happening when there is a pandemic in the United States? Why there are countries that, de that grow differently from other countries? Now, in order to rationalize this phenomenon, economists need a theory. And in particular, the world is such a complex place that in order to explain this phenomenon, economists need to make assumptions, something that simplifies the world. Think about basically this assumption as a way of making the world or a particular phenomenon understandable. Hence, we are going to conclude our review by looking at chapter three and nine of Mankiw. Now, chapter three and nine are about trade, and these are such important chapters in the context of macroeconomics nowadays that I really wanted to, to review this chapter. So in chapter three, we are gonna try to understand why countries trade within each other. And once we understand that, it's why, basically, how do these countries decide who specialize in the production of which good? For this, we are gonna introduce very powerful concepts like the one of comparative advantage. Hence, we conclude our review by looking at chapter nine of Mankiw. Now, while in chapter three we learn 
the countries can gain from trade by specializing the production of the goods on which they have a comparative advantage, in chapter 9 we learn how the surplus generated from these trades is split among the market players. In particular, we are going to use the tools of welfare economics in order to understand the well-being implications of trade. Once we finish our review, we start in the chapters that are really related to macroeconomics. In particular, we are going to cover from chapter 10 up to chapter 21 of Mencu, skipping some of the chapters in between, just mentioning very briefly their context. Now, you will see that a pattern will emerge in the way in which we are going to learn macroeconomics. In particular, as economists, we are interested in understanding very complex phenomena like why there are countries that grow more than other countries, why there are countries that experience more inflation than others, why there are countries that specialize in the production of some of the goods, and so on and so forth. So the first challenge that we face is how do we measure this phenomenon? And the second challenge is eventually, once we learn how to measure this phenomenon, how can we rationalize this phenomenon? So for each one of these topics, you will see that first, we learn how to measure it, and second, how can we use economic theory in order to explain it. So, we start our journey by learning, by learning how to measure quantities and prices that macroeconomists are very interested in. Particularly in chapter 10, we learn how to measure the gross domestic product, which is the market value of all the goods and services that are produced in a country in a given period of time. And then in chapter 11, how to measure the costs of well-being, how it changes over time the cost of well-being. With chapter 12, we're going to propose our first theory. Now, something you will see during the course is that macroeconomists, actually macroeconomics as a science, does not have a unique theory to explain all the phenomena. Like in physics, there are multiple theories. In order to explain the universe, there is not one unique theory. The same thing is for macroeconomics. And in chapter 12, we are going to see the first theory. Generally speaking, you can think about macroeconomic theory organized in three building blocks, three main theories. Now, these three main theories are organized depending on the horizon on which macroeconomists want to make predictions. We are going to see a theory of the very long run, where macroeconomists want to answer questions about existence, the different growth rates, long-run growth rates across countries, why the United States have experienced these huge growth rates in the last centuries, while there are other countries that experience very low growth rates and others that experience even negative growth rates. Then we're going to look at theories of the long run, and then we're going to look at theory of the short run. So we are going to try to understand the business cycle fluctuations, why GDP fluctuates around this long run trend. Now, it's very important that uh, we realize that the, each theory is targeted in understanding and provide an answer to a particular question. As instance, if I want to build a model of COVID, I'm actually about to submit a paper about that, where I want to understand the effect of social distancing, then I need to have a model that can make predictions about the effect of these social distancing policies in the short term, very, very short term, like a couple of weeks. Then, instead, if I'm interested about the macroeconomic implication in terms of existence of fluctuation and the effect of this pandemic on the real business cycle fluctuation, recessions, existence, then I need a longer horizon. For each one of these horizons, we are going to make different types of assumptions. So, the, if you want the take away from this is that uh, when you're going to build a theory, when you build a theory, you have to target the theory to answer a particular question. 
that theory would be very valid for the particular questions, but may be completely trash for other types of questions. So, in chapter 12, we're gonna see our first theory, the theory of the long run, where we try to understand why countries experience different growth rates and what are the determinants of these growth rates. Then we move in chapter 13, where we provide the national income account identity, while sequins are equal to investments, and in particular how markets operate through interest rates in order to make these quantities equal to each other. Then we move to chapter 15. Chapter 15, we are going to look at the determinants of unemployment in the long run. And after that, we are going to look at chapter 16 and 17. Now, in chapter 16 and 17, we are going to introduce a theory of money and how to measure money. We are going to move to later chapters, which are in particular chapter 18 and chapter 19, where we look Sorry. Chapter 18 and chapter 19, where we look basically at an open economy. So we look at the effects of our policies, as is the incentivizing savings or investment, in an economy that is an open economy. Last but not least, we conclude our chapters with chapter 20 and 21, which are very exciting chapters. Now, in these chapters, we build a completely new theory, which is a theory of the short run that will allow us to understand business cycle fluctuations. Wonderful! We have arrived to the top of our first trail and we are ready to embark in our journey. Catch up with you later, guys!